Okay, welcome back. So this is a tutorial that reviews chapter three in the textbook and will also prepare you to uh, work on your second lab assignment. So in this tutorial, you're going to learn how to create new variables. The example for this tutorial is um, just a kind of a silly one that I made up, but it's based on uh, 10 Girl Scouts selling Girl Scout cookies. So just to orient you to the data, and so I've gone ahead and I've created all the variables and I've entered all the, uh, the data, but just to get you oriented to it. We're here in our data ed editor in the data view, and we can see that our each of our 10 cases is one of our Girl Scouts. The Girl Scouts are identified by a unique identifier or a unique number one through 10. The other six variables are the number of houses visited and the number of boxes of cookies sold on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So for example, scout number one visited one house on Friday, but sold zero boxes of cookies, visited four houses on Saturday and sold one box, etc. Just to remind you that our variable view, I'll toggle over to the variable view, that's where we create variables. So I've just gone in, I've created a name for each of the variables that is descriptive and that makes sense. I didn't include a label because I thought that the names were descriptive enough, but if I wanted, I could have included a label that said um, scout identification number, um, Friday houses could have been the number of houses visited on Friday, but that's kind of optional. Uh, the, the variable names were descriptive enough, so I didn't need an additional label to describe what the variable was. One thing that I will point out is uh, the type of measure that was specified for each of the variables. A nominal uh, measure was specified for Scout ID because even though the values on this variable are numbers, 1 through 10, the numbers don't have any um, magnitude. like the ID of two is not more than the ID of one, or like four is not more than three. So the numbers don't have magnitude, they're just categories to identify the scouts. So that's why it's a nominal variable. On the other hand, the other variables, the numbers have magnitude, like visiting two houses is more than one. Uh, so we specify that those are scale variables when the, the numbers have magnitude. Just something to pay attention to for um, future assignments uh, is making sure that um, our variables are um, identified as the proper measure. And that will be important later on because there are certain analyses um, that can't be done unless your variables are specified as one type or another. All right. Getting to the uh, what we need to do for this assignment, uh, you're going to learn how to create variables. So the first variable that you need to create will be the total number of houses that were visited by each scout. So what we want is we want a, a way to combine Friday houses with Saturday houses and Sunday houses and get the sum. Right? So we can see that scout number one visited one house on Friday four houses on Saturday, and five houses on Sunday, one plus four plus five is 10, we want a variable, which is total houses visited, uh, which would be a value of, of 10 for that scout. Here's how we do that. We create variables using our transform command. So going into our transform menu, the very first option is compute variable. When we click on compute variable, we get this dialog box that opens up. We see that there's a space for to name our target variable. Uh, so you can call your target variable whatever you want to call it, but it should make sense and it should be descriptive. So in this case, what we're looking for is the total number of houses. So um, I'll just write that. I'll write total houses. Notice that I put a, um, an underscore there because you can't have spaces in your variable name. Uh, I could just write it like that. I could just write houses if I wanted. It doesn't really matter what the name of your variable is. It should just 
makes sense. Like you don't want to call it ice cream cones or something like that. Okay. Um, also just calling your, this target variable total wouldn't make a lot of sense either because there's, we're, we're looking for total houses and then we're going to compute total boxes as well. So it needs to be descriptive. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a numeric expression that gives us the total or the sum of the houses visited. And there's a couple different ways that you can do this, and I'll show you both ways. In whichever way you choose to do it for your lab assignment, it's up to you. It's a preference. So one way to, to compute this variable is to just kind of um, build, the, build the equation kind of in a logical way. So one way to do that is to just take all of our variables, which we'll do by um, selecting it and then using the blue arrow to move it over, and then just adding up each of the variables. So Friday houses plus Saturday houses plus Sunday houses. Okay, so that's our numeric expression that would just give us that total. That would sum everything up. And I just added the plus sign by, plus sign by using the keyboard. What I want you to do is I want you to paste your numeric expression. And that'll generate syntax, right? So there's our syntax. And then I'm going to run that syntax, select the whole thing. What you see that that just did is that opened up an output viewer, which just indicates that that syntax was run. I'm going to close that because it's not particularly useful. No, I'm not going to save that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my data editor again and just scroll over here to the, the right hand column. And you can see that that command was, um, was executed. And as expected, we see that the total number of houses for Scout 1 was 10. So that's one way that you can go about creating total houses. Let me show you another way. Let's go back to transform, compute variable. So what SPSS already has is um, several built-in functions. One set of functions that I want for you to get familiar with are the statistical functions. So scrolling down to the bottom, you'll see that there's a function group called statistical functions. And when that's selected, we've got a couple different um, options. One option that you'll see there is the sum option. All right, and then when you click on that, in this little box, you get a descriptive, you get a description of what that function does. You'll see what this is gonna do is return the sum of the arguments that you put in between parentheses. So let's give that a try. When highlighted, I'm gonna click this blue arrow, and then that's gonna move up the numeric expression. You'll see that there's question marks. Those are just placeholders for your variables. Okay, so I'm gonna delete that first question mark, select Friday houses, and move it over. The variables have to be separated by a comma, right? So you'll see that there's a comma after, house, after houses. I'm gonna delete that second question mark, move over Saturday houses. I'm gonna add a comma, select Sunday houses, and then move that over. Okay, so we're taking the sum of our three variables, Friday houses, Saturday houses, Sunday houses. Um, now, the next thing that I'm going to do, okay, I hit the paste button on purpose because it says change existing variable. This is where SPSS is nice because it's often smarter than, than we are. What this is saying is you previously created a target variable called total houses, which had a different numeric expression. Do you want to go ahead and change the variable that you already created? I'm going to hit cancel, and I'm just going to give this a different target name just to be able to demonstrate and to compare that I just showed you the same way of doing the same thing, basically. Okay, so let's paste that command. I'm going to go back to my, whoops, go back to my syntax window. 
we've got a, another variable here, which is total houses two. I'll execute that command. We get the output window that can go away. Go to my data editor. And what you'll see is that that's an identical variable. So just to demonstrate that when calculating a variable, there may be different ways to arrive at the same um, at the same thing. Okay, so you can use kind of like a logical um, way of, of of computing the variable by just adding one variable to another variable to another variable, or if you need to compute a variable um, that could be a little bit more complex than that, there is a set of built-in functions that SPSS already has. Okay, both ways work. We don't need that variable anymore. All right, just to get a little bit more, well, I'll just go through computing the other variables that we need. So the next variable that you're going to be asked to calculate is total boxes. So I'm going to change that name. One nice thing about this is that um, you can you can either move over each you can move over each variable or you can just adjust the uh, the variable names in the expression. So I'll do that here just to demonstrate is rather than clicking and, and moving over, um, I just adjust, I just typed in the variables here. Of course, you got to make sure that you're spelling everything correctly, but that's a quick way to do it. So I'll paste that. Go to the syntax window and execute that command. SPSS is a little annoying. It gives you an output viewer every time you do something. All right. Now, um, for some reason, you'll notice that instead of a scale variable, this was um, SPSS is specifying that this is a nominal variable. Actually, not quite sure why I did that. I'm just going to change it to a scale. All right. So then we've got total boxes. And then the last variable that you need to compute is a measure of efficiency, which is the number of houses that it takes to sell a box cookies. This is going to be computed by taking houses divided by boxes. Okay. So these are the two new variables that we created. So this is a ratio of the number of houses to the number of boxes. Okay. So you can call this whatever you want. It's a measure of efficiency. Uh, so I'm just going to call it EFF for efficiency. I'm going to paste that command so I have it in my syntax. Go to my syntax. And then we'll see that variable. Okay. So again, just to interpret this, this is the number of houses that a scout had to go to in order to sell a single box of cookies. So for scout number one, scout number one needed to visit 3.33 houses to sell one. Scout number two needed to, to visit one house to sell a box. We can kind of see that with total houses and total boxes, right? The ratio is one to one. Every time they went to a house, they sold a box. So that's, that's the third variable that you're going to need. Okay. Um, the last thing that I'm going to have you do is to calculate overall totals or overall sums. So some of the questions that you'll need to answer is among all 10 scouts, how many houses were visited, how many uh, boxes were sold on each of the three days, as well as overall. So the way that we do that is we're going to go into our descriptive statistics and uh, use our descriptive statistics to find overall sums. So our descriptive statistics are found in our Analyze menu. Fourth one in the drop-down. And then in the Descriptive Statistics menu, we've got the Descriptives command. So click on that. Okay. What you're going to do is take uh, your eight eight variables, 
So Friday through Sunday, houses and boxes, as well as total houses and total boxes. You don't need the scout ID. That would be a meaningless variable. You also don't need the efficiency variable. So I've highlighted all of those, and I'm going to move it over. On your options, you can see by default, SPSS would give you um, several different statistics, but not the one that we want. So we're actually going to deselect mean, deselect standard deviation, deselect the, the minimum and the maximum, and select sum. Because all I want to know is what is the overall sum for each of these variables. Okay, I'm going to continue, and then I'm going to paste that command. Okay, hopefully you can see me toggling back and forth between my windows. You might paste something and say, what happened? Where did it go? Okay, it's just in the syntax window, which is likely going to be behind your data editor. Okay, so we've got this long command. We can see that what we're re requesting are descriptive statistics for all of our eight variables, and the statistic that we're requesting is the sum. I'm going to play that. Okay, in this case, the output window is meaningful. So we can see here we've got the total number of houses that all 10 scouts visited, the total number of boxes that were sold by all 10 scouts on Friday, um, etc. And then your overall total houses vid uh, uh, visited, overall total boxes uh, sold, across those three days by all 10 scouts. So you can use this information to, um, to answer the questions.